As American infrastructure budget and spending has increased, so has the size of the projects that are being worked on. States have put work into massive interchanges and freeway redesigns in the hope of decreasing traffic and congestion. In some cases, this has worked, with awful designs having more room to be improved. But in other cases, it has done nothing but create massive, overwhelming interchanges that have increased confusion and not majorly affected the congestion in the area. So today we're going to talk about some of the biggest, most complicated interchanges in the country. Some have worked in dealing with traffic patterns, while some have seen major criticism from the public. Before that though, I wanted to quickly ask if you would please consider subscribing to the channel. We make these kinds of videos every week, and there are more interchange related videos on the channel if you'd like to check those out. Subscribing is very easy for you and helps me out a ton, so I really appreciate it. Thank you. So I've gone over a lot of the best examples in my last two videos on this topic. But America is such a large country, and cities have continued to grow and increase in their automobile usage. And as this has happened, the infrastructure required has naturally grown with it. Today we'll look at large interchanges, confusing interchanges, and other interesting examples. But let's start in a major city that sees a lot of talk in regards to this topic, and that's Los Angeles. Our first interchange is the Boyle Heights Interchange at the crossings between I-10, I-5, US-101, and State Route 60. Now, you'll start by noticing the first three highways, being major routes. I-5 is the busiest road on the west coast. I-10 travels from Santa Monica all the way to Jacksonville, Florida, through cities like Phoenix, Houston, and New Orleans. US-101 travels up the west coast as the Pacific Coast Highway, being a major historical route. All three of these routes meet just southeast of downtown Los Angeles at a huge interchange near the Los Angeles River. This interchange suffers from too many different routes intercepting in one spot, being five directional. It's triangular with a bit of room right in the center for commercial development. There's basically constant traffic, being infamous for 24-7 backups and congestion. Something I found interesting is how for most of the directions, you're basically forced onto around a mile of ramp, and it's mostly unavoidable, being such a long, stringy interchange. Now, in its defense, it's set up for disaster with its proximity to downtown, but it could definitely be prettier. Before we get to the rest of the video, though, let's talk about something a bit less complicated. This video is sponsored by BetterHelp. Is something interfering with your happiness or preventing you from achieving your goals? Well, BetterHelp may be the answer. Starting therapy can be hard. The idea of this type of face-to-face -face interaction can be uncomfortable for some, and the right therapist might not be available in your area. With BetterHelp, you can complete your therapy sessions with a licensed therapist on the phone, as a video chat, or even via messaging. Whatever is most comfortable for you. If you think you might benefit from therapy, consider BetterHelp. Click the link in the description or visit betterhelp.com slash beavergeography. BetterHelp can match you to one of over 30,000 therapists in their network and give you access to a wide range of expertise. All you have to do to get started is fill out a questionnaire to help assess your specific needs and you'll get matched with your therapist within 48 hours in most cases. Scheduling is convenient and if your first therapist doesn't feel like the right fit, you can easily switch with no additional cost. Click the link in the description or visit betterhelp.com slash beavergeography today. Clicking that link helps support this channel and it also gets you 10% off your first month of BetterHelp so you can connect with the therapist and see if it helps. Thank you to BetterHelp help and let's get back to the video. Next up we have the Golden Glades interchange in Miami, Florida at the intersections between I-95, US-441, State Route 9, and County Road 826. Located north of the city's downtown, this five-directional interchange is known as one of the biggest and most chaotic interchanges in the state. The interchange developed slowly due to the infrastructural expansions of Miami's growing period. Originally, it had a simpler design and only served as a connector between I-95 and State Route 826, being built in 1952. But as US-441 was expanded from Orlando into Miami-Dade County, it was set to be built directly through the current location, and it would have to be expanded to include the new route. The Florida DOT broke ground on the new Golden Glades Interchange in 1962 and it was completed in 1963 with the current design. Present day, the interchange is seen as a bottleneck by every highway that is involved in it. There were plans to rework the traffic-filled spots, but all plans fell through, and the current design has been generally kept since its building, with your obvious upgrades and expansions through the last 60 years. 
As of 2017, more lane expansions are taking place, and the interchange is set to get even bigger. So we'll see if that solves their long-term problems. Next up we have the Newark Airport Interchange, also known as the Southern Mixing Bowl, at the meeting place of I-78, US-9, and State Route 21, near the Newark Liberty International Airport. This absolute behemoth of an interchange is one of the biggest in the New York City metropolitan area, and has been created due to the high volume of traffic near this large airport. Now if you look at airports across the country, they are great places to find some of the craziest and most intricate infrastructure projects out there. There is so much constant traffic coming in and out of the area, so especially with one this large, it is set up for something like this. With that though, it wasn't always this bad. If you look at its current design, it feels like I-78 pushes its way through unnaturally, and creates most of the problems with how it looks and was built. This is because it wasn't always there. The interchange was built in 1952, and Interstate 78 wasn't constructed in the area until the 1970s. So New Jersey was forced to work the new highway into the interchange plan, hence the confusion and sheer volume of ramps and connections. Next up we move to one of the most requested interchanges on our list, the Tim Moreland Interchange, at the intersection of I-85 and I-285, also known as Spaghetti Junction. Located in the northeast suburbs of Atlanta, this is one of the biggest interchanges in this large metropolis, being known as a major choke point in an already traffic-filled area. Originally, this interchange was a simple cloverleaf design. It was one of the worst design spots in the entire state, earning the name Malfunction Junction. As part of the Freeing the Freeways program in Georgia around 1982, it was included in a much-needed upgrade and it did improve things in the area. But now with the current design, it instead earns the name Spaghetti Junction, which I found funny because it feels like they can't win. Either it's not big enough or it's too big. The name fits the interchange though, with there being 11 miles of ramps on this stack design. Basically it's not somewhere you wanna be during rush hour or any time of the day, I'd say. Finally, we move to the Boston metropolitan area for the last few interchanges, with all the interchanges related to the Big Dig. So the Big Dig project was one of the most expensive infrastructure upgrades in U.S. history, costing over $21 billion adjusted to inflation. The project set to fix congestion related to the complex, historic streets of downtown Boston, and get rid of the large viaduct cutting through the downtown. To do this, they would have to move I-93 underground, as well as create other connections around the area in places like the Logan Airport. The first interchange involved with this would be the largest, at the intersections between I-90 and I-93, just south of the downtown. This massive jelly of thin ramps and highways at the foot of the city's skyline is about what most people would expect. Suffering from being at the entrance of multiple tunnels, with slow-moving ramps forced to squish into the allocated land. This is the biggest interchange related to the project, but there are a couple more I'd like to touch on. The next one is at the entrance to the Logan Airport, where I-90 goes right up against the airport's grounds, and the only real available land to create this interchange was to the west of the highway. So there are several looping ramps that were created to connect. There are five different loops around here, and they all travel directly next to each other. The third of the Big Dig interchanges is located to the north of the downtown, and as far as I'm aware, it's referred to as the Charlestown Interchange. This one sees the same basic design as the Logan Airport Interchange, where most of it is located on one side of the highway. There are connections from I-93 onto US-9 and State Route 28. I think it's interesting how these highways through Boston work with their limited room. In an interchange of this nature, it would look nothing like this in somewhere like Texas, where they have significantly more room to work with. Here in Boston, though, there isn't a lot of room near the downtown that can be given to the freeways, so they're forced to make do and create these fascinating, confined designs. So those are all the interchanges I wanted to talk about in this video. As always, it'll be interesting to see what new interchanges pop up across the country in growing cities and how they're changed in historic cities that are moving away from freeways as their main way of road transportation. Thanks for watching. 
Thank you to the members this week, KMS162, JL, SirJC17, Brad Andrew McCall, Dominic Psyche, Rosebud4, Jeremy Jarvis, Christopher DeAngelis, Stark Bird, Elijah Pass, Big Pasty, Jeremy Crone, Wolfling73, Snyder Schwein, Florida Jake, Stormy Knight, Nikita Marchinoff, Benjamin Whiting, Ryan Devins, and Haas of the Wolf. I appreciate you all so much, you really help out the channel. If you want to become a member, the link is down in the description below. All this money just goes straight into my savings, so if you want to help me out as a person and you appreciate the content, this is the best way to do it. Thank you.